Well, by, by, by magic, my guests have arrived, um, which, is, which is amazing. They found a, an open door somewhere, <laughs> which is, is fa- fairly brilliant. Um, well, do, yeah, look, yeah, look, look, have that, have that microphone. Thank you very much. The, um, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm all, in, all in confusion. I've got, I've got a very long uh, nine minute track lined up so I can try and find you. <laughs> <laughs> and you've, uh, you've, found, you've found your way in. Are it's, you Will? Is your name Will? My, yeah, my name's Will. Yeah. Um, but would you, would you introduce yourselves? Uh, just, just say that that microphone works okay and that one's fine. I'm not. You'll have, you just have to lean, a, lean across. I'd suggest leaning across to this microphone. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Nice and cosy. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, this is this is fine. Will you introduce yourselves? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm Katie Grace, and I'm in the choir, and sort of merge into the ensemble. So we better better start again. Yeah. Um, this is this is about. Commotion time. Yes. So just explain commotion time. Okay. Because like, I've sort of led into this, but the audience just need need some explanation. Definitely, Liz. Do you want to take this because you're getting all fancy outside with your words? Describing <laughs> oh, it. You've got excellent <laughs> words to use. How the commotion time is a play. I mean, we clearly, you will tell us very clearly when you are live, of course, won't you? Um, the commotion time is a, a play which is set just after Henry VIII died. And it's in 1549, and it's about a well. It's set in a place called Poundstock, which is North Cornwall, and there are a large group of villagers who are meeting with officials, and it's what they do. And it's it's based on a, a group of women who are actually who who lead a, a rebellion against the new order of prayer, which is is not no longer Latin, and they want to, you know because Henry VIII brought it in, and uh, the crown want it now to be everywhere and everyone to be speaking with it, having the new new bible and new way of and other things of course they're wanting to take down the old idolatry the, the the on the walls and the madonna and and anything to do with the old way of being yeah so they rally up and rally forces and and go forward to see if they can preserve their faith and their traditions and um it ends in tragedy, but it's an amazing tragedy. But hope, yes, hope exactly. for the future, and that's yeah. the the strength of the women in this. Just the absolute cornerstones of life as they still are today. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so what what I what I couldn't understand what I've heard about it so far is. Is, is any of it set in Exeter? Does the location move towards well, Exeter? Yeah, well, Exeter was um, the, um, what's the words? Exeter was the, um, the, I can't think of the word. But the, the regional word. hub. Yes, the regional um, hub of the West. And um, so they were marching up there to try and gather forces from there because if they could, and that was the only place that wasn't succumbing to, um, you know, that wasn't joining this protest in trying to save their old ways and they thought if they could if they could take their demands through there and gather reinforcements that would hugely support their cause and then they could continue up to London and um, take their you know demands to be listened to to you know to be able to preserve their traditions and their way of life. So the the city of Exeter was closed off the people in charge of Exeter had closed the city walls and yeah. wouldn't let these marching protesters in. Nice. Um, and so, so our character. So is the play set in Exeter? So the play moves. The play starts in Poundstock, and then you hear the stories of the people who went on this march. The news is brought back to Poundstock, so you hear of things in Exeter, things in Sanford Courtney. Um, but Poundstock is the hub. Um, but the the story it's really a story for the whole southwest it was how life was changing how people were impacted by that and if they'd managed to have got Exeter kind of on their side which a lot of the local people were we think it was more the people in charge who wouldn't let it happen then they would have had a lot more power and a lot more chance of of making everything happen. Yeah because it's really important to remember that lots of people in Exeter were rooting um, for the um, the protesters but then um they sent uh, the royal army which um, held a lot of mercenaries that they'd 
um, brought over from abroad to try and stamp out this so that they could continue to take over. And there were some key places in Exeter that were part of this. At the bottom of Stepcop Hill, which is where the house that moved is, um, there they, they they dug a d- tunnel or they you know in- improved a tunnel and they filled it with gunpowder or, or explosives of some form and they were going to light that and before they managed to light it the people of Exeter well the the governing body in Exeter had uh, had actually um, poured water down the hill and it stopped it from happening okay. so that would have been one of the key entries they need and then at, at um, where the, the college is at St it was St David's Hill was mm-hmm. it St David's Hill um, that area was one of their main places that they were setting up camp so that for, for this siege that they were hoping to set up to stop food and other things coming into the, the city so the, 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 there were other places as well the guild hall for example as well the, the guild hall was was um, was part of it yeah, lots, lots of places in the city, and, and as I said, there are um, lots of things telling us that the, the actual people in the city were on board. They wanted to work with um, the uprising that was going on, um, but it was the people who were in charge who had closed the gates and said no. And really interestingly, the Exeter City motto translates from Latin to, I think it's always faithful or always true, and that stems from the fact that Exeter stayed true to the king. So something that some people were very proud of, actually, in our story, you think, oh, if you'd just gone with it, things could be very different. So the, 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 the chorus, because you, you're representing the chorus. So we've got here with us, we've got Katie, who's in the choir, and Liz, who is in the acting chorus. And then I actually work for the Northcott. Oh, so I am right. supporting our lovely amazing community. And your role in, in the Northcott is? I am the community engagement producer. So I, it's my responsibility to make sure these people have a lovely time and I answer all their questions. <laughs> and she keeps everything from going haywire because as, as Martin Berry, the director, has his inspiration, is telling us what different ways to go and Grace is there scribbling it down to make sure that we remember what happened and what was his inspiration. So he's like, so, okay, so what did I say last week? And Grace runs to her file. <laughs> all of my folders, this, Ready this to go. Is what happened. Then we have Fee, who's Fee's surname. Uh, Russell. Fee Russell, who who uh, um, has is the designer of the costumes and the uh, set. And, and the set as mm-hmm. well, and so, and so she's very much a big part of it. And then we have um, Ben. Ben. Um, I can't remember Ben's surname. Sutcliffe. Ben Sutcliffe. Ben Sutcliffe, who, who who's made beautiful music. Oh, he's amazing. It's just wonderful work. People, t- uh, turn, uh, people have tears when they hear a couple of the songs. They're yeah. so beautiful. It's a really yeah. moving story. And then we also have the wonderful Sarah Dickinson, who is the writer. The writer. <laughs> and this is a play that she's been working on, holding in her head and her heart for about 20 years now. Um, she was brought up in Poundstock and in the surrounding parishes so it's really it's a really important story for her she's channeled lots of the women who have raised her into these characters because even though it's set kind of far along in the past the themes of it and these central women holding this community together are still true today it's still the women in churches and community halls who are holding communities and getting them through difficult times such as the one in the show and the play is set in a a particular place it's in a guild house and it's the the last guild house in the whole of Cornwall which is actually actively used I mean, it was the hub for the community and uh, they was the starting of the building of it is, was around this time and so the story is completely around so, just the guild house so I'm still I'm sorry I'm, still, I'm just I'm going to ask the same question <laughs> yeah, yeah. see where, where it goes um the, the, so the location of the, of the play, which stays the same, is in the Guildhouse, so that what's going on in Exeter is just hearsay. Is mm-hmm. that right? Yeah, yeah. And that. Then it's reported back quite officially in some points, and, right. and it comes okay. back to us. And then shocking news like the, the plague and, and things like that is nearby. And then all the celebrations they have, it's a very celebratory play because all the different celebrations through the year take place in this Guildhouse, and then you see all of those celebrations. It's a very joyous play as well. It's definitely got a lot of joy in it. Yeah. So their focal point is Exeter. That's where they have to march to, in, and that's where they're receiving their news from. And then so it sort of all builds up to that moment, coming to the Exeter um, gates, but then not being allowed in, not being permitted, and then um, the sort of tragedy of not being able to get through and being um, cut down by these um, mercenaries. So this play is an amazing um nod and honour to these faith, um, faithful people they're finally bringing them into Exeter and um, giving them the sort of respect and credit that they, they never got 
in, in those days. The big Chad tragedy took place outside Exeter in two places and 4,000 of these people who were part of this rebellion were, were killed. And it was the Crown and, the, as it was said earlier, the mercenaries who, 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 um, who took them down. And massive battles took place. And, of course, they didn't have all the same weaponry and, and that, that, that those people had. So we've had... Was it Clist St. Clist St. Mary? Was, was, it, was it Clist St. Mary? I thought it was the same. Mm. Was, um, I think they set fire to the village. So, so throughout the play, you hear all of these references to right. Exeter, right. to the surrounding villages, to Poundstock, and it really comes together as a play for the South West, which is why it's so important. We've got this community cast. So we have seven professional actors, and then we have a community cast of 44. And it's really important to us that we have local people telling this story. Everyone on the creative team has a connection to the Southwest. All of the actors have a, a connection to the Southwest. It feels really right that we are the people owning this story. And as Katie said, finally getting this story inside the city. <laughs> right, and you and you you are just going with the assumption that the pe people inside the city were sympathetic. Some were and some weren't. So it was it was it was divided city. Mm -hmm. They knew it was a divided city from the knowledge that they already had, and it was definitely. And we have a chap, a man called John Hooker, who who catalogues all everything that happened, and that's why we know so and much he was about a it. A strong Protestant, and yes. very much against the rebellion. Yes, and he so was not on the team. No, so he no. was not on the team. <laughs> so he, he was able. And to he was the one who recorded most of the uh, historical events. So he did not put them in a favourable light. And um, but um, we've had um. Mark Stoyle. Yes, we've had oh a my wonderful historian, so Mark Stoyle, amazing. working with us. <laughs> so he has written um, a book about this period in history. Because he's just been obsessed with it and delved into it and found all these missing pieces and it's this is the anything you want to know about medieval times and ask him and he'll know the answer yeah. <laughs> and he's been able to come along to our rehearsals he's worked with sarah on the script he's answered all our questions all our emails at any time of night to make sure that this play is really rooted in the history and very authentic and um it's, it's amazing to hear the um him lay out the sort of timeline and the the vibe of the show because obviously we're going to have to portray the emotion and um, from that time so to be able to really sort of understand the sort of layout and where it's coming from um, really helps. A big part of this is Sarah Dickinson it's a, a world premiere of this play and she actually has plays on at the Globe she has her second play at the Globe and she's had plays on the National Theatre and uh, she's an eminent playwright. So this is a world premiere for her. She's been very involved in the rehearsals. She's mm -hmm. been there at many of the rehearsals. But that's been amazing, yes, being yes. a part of the process and just seeing a new show come to life rather than a repeated show, actually seeing the first steps of a new show. It's incredible and her completely a part of the process and even having to step in for some of the characters that she's um, written of the main um, women. And it's just been amazing to be a part of all of that and see her um, passion and see her so so close and a part of it and seeing her tear up with Martin Berry, the director, as they hear the songs and seeing it come together and come to life, something that she's worked so hard on. It's an incredible experience. The rehearsals have taken three months. So we, this is a very much... So how, could, could you just say something about what, what you've done before this? Because as I understood, a lot of the people have, have been active in various forms of drama in Exeter previously. So how did you... What, everyone, you has, everyone has been an, in acting in some form prior to this, and we had a, I think it was about a two-hour <laughs> um, audition for it, so, in, you know, not everyone achieved the, you know, being acting in the play. It wasn't and, a horrible audition, it was not the X I was going, <laughs> no, I was going to we say, it, it, was, it, was it was very was, interesting. It was, it was, it was done as a group of group been, ac activities, <laughs> and, and then in it, then speaking of it with a caution, it's Jackson to a part of the play. It's been an amazing um, experience from the very beginning, because I received an email from, because we, from the community theatres that I've been a part of um, with... As well, the um, Exeter Little Theatre Company, they sent through this um, audition opportunity and I thought, oh, not exactly sure what it's about, but I'll, I'll go into it. And just from the very beginning of the audition process with um, Martin and with Ben and 
it was incredible and they did it as a workshop audition so you just got to you were with a little group of people so what had you been doing before that then? so i i had been in um a couple of shows with because i was i wasn't really sure about the community theater in that and so i recently looked into it and then i worked backstage for um i was a show the sound of my music because i got in touch like a few weeks before and they're like oh we need some help backstage so i went and helped backstage at the north Guard, which was an amazing experience because then you meet all the people backstage and just really learn to appreciate the amount of effort that goes into these shows and putting up the backdrops and everything and, and the lighting and just absolute um mammoth um goings on behind scene and then i was part of the st david players and we did the um, the Sorcerer, a Gilbert and Sullivan um, musical at the Barnfield. So that was a great experience to be at the Barnfield. So it's all the old dance that we <laughs> keep going back to the Barnfield and the Northcott. And then another show with Exeter Little Theatre Company, um, which was um, Nativity the Musical, which was an amazing experience <laughs> too because it was so fun and ridiculous and the actors and actresses in it were exceptional. <laughs> So, yeah, just sort of the community theatre and, yeah. I have a different background. I come from improvisation and, um, in fact, one of your presenters here, Cathy e. Towers, yes. um, has, was, was led some of the workshops that I've been in and I've been doing improvisation for about three years and and uh, I'm off to, up to the British Improv, Improv Project, it's called, which is a four-day event for people who are improvisers or interested in improvisation. It could be beginners or it could be people like me that have been doing it for a long time. And, and I just love not having a script and not having n nothing. Literally, you, you come up on, on in front of people and you, you work with what you're told this is about and then you do it. And it's very exciting. So it's given me a lot of experience of being able to just be able to do what you're asked to do in that moment and not have difficulty with doing that because that's what you do in improvisation and and of always making it easy for the other person is improvisation yes and, and and letting them have something to say from from what where you're coming from rather than blocking them in any way and make it easy so have you have you been able to change the the performance on, on in this in this play well, no, I think just do my own. I just do. I just do my own. Bit, 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 being, I'm villager number three or something. <laughs> I have two. So you, I have do what, you do what's asked. I have two lines, but I have got. I have got a role of you know with a woman who's who's distressed after something difficult's happened, and because I'm an older woman, so I think that sort of fits quite well. And then, um, and there are there are other parts where we are with we have candles and we lead processions, and we're we're very much in the foreground. We're not just in the background mm -hmm. somewhere. As, we're not in the background. We're part of the play I mean most of the scenes actually the because people, this yeah. is a village of you know a village of fellows is the whole community you know it's so it's very much they're a part of all of it <laughs> and actually just touching on your background of performers while it's wonderful we have a cast that are full of people who have done wonderful amdram and might have done drama at university and things like that we've also got cast members who have never done acting who might have been sent the audition information, might have an interest in history. One of our cast members is an ex-history teacher and are just giving it a go. And so to be in the rehearsal room over these three months has been such a privilege to watch people kind of find this new part of themselves mm. and find confidence being on the stage and feel a real sense of ownership over the play that we're making together. It's been a really beautiful thing. And it's amazing going from um, community theatre into um, working with a um, you know a director and a music director, and they do this you know full time, which is a wonderful thing to see and do. They're amazing. <laughs> and the creative director Martin Berry's only been in place for probably less than a year now, and this is the first big production of their own that the Northcott's done for I don't know how many years. For a while, yeah. This is a big return for the Northcott to creating and producing their own work. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a really special moment. It's exciting bringing drama back to the theatre. <laughs> really. So if people don't have tickets, they should get them now because our first night has sold out. <laughs> oh, literally. <laughs> has, has sold out. Yes. And so we've got um, other performances on the Saturday, the Sunday. Matinees the as week. well. Yeah, relaxed performances. Performances are audio described. We would advise getting tickets earlier on because the hope is that word will spread <laughs> and they will, they will sell out. But yeah. I do think it's going to be a really a really special moment for the North Cot, for the community involved and for the city. Absolutely. When I first got into it, I didn't know what I was getting into. I <laughs> didn't even know. None of us. I didn't know about this place. 
terrible. I didn't know about this part of history or anything. So it's just been like this um, coming into light. It's been incredible and, and thinking, oh my goodness, we were part of something really special here. <laughs> and it's the late medieval period, which means the costumes are fascinating because they're, they're you know so culturally different to today. They're, it's wonderful to to see the, 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 the you know the, how people lived at that time and um, being as authentic as it's been possible to be. And yeah, it's very very exciting. And Fee is working hard to um, do it in a green green manner. So yes, not yes. too much is wasted. So she's she's doing finding, amazing. Finding but, as yeah. much as possible, from, you know, which has already been used in some way. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. So, so what sort sort of musicians have you got then? What what, what sort of instruments they use? Oh my God! So the instruments, I I was in one of the first run throughs yesterday, hearing it all, and it is just gorgeous. <laughs> we've got um, pianos, we've got a fiddle, we've got a double bass, we've got some of the professional cast um, playing guitars, we've got people in the community cast playing. I'm so sorry if I get this wrong. A flute and a piccolo I believe yes. <laughs> look at me go um, so it's a real beautiful ensemble of lots of instruments yeah. um, and the music itself is a mix of um, beautiful choral music as well as a very rousing kind of almost folk number yes. at the end that if you don't cry to you have a heart of stone <laughs> um, so it will I will challenge anybody to walk out not humming one of the songs yeah. One of the challenges as an actor in this is, has been to learn Latin. Yeah, I was just yeah. like, no, I was like, I was like, we better get praise for that Latin. You we, know, we, that's we been work. Bring in the Latin, that's we? so much yes. work. Yes. But that is what gets people stirred and the tears coming. So it's the Hail it's Mary. It. <laughs> the Hail Mary in Latin, which is... Mm. A, about five lines and we all have to learn it or most of us have to learn it um, to be able to really really be articulate with it oh on, I see yes night. that's the ensemble yeah, we had to learn a whole song in Latin. you had to learn a whole yes, song yes, in yes. Latin too <laughs> yes but luckily one of our cast members Connor he is uh, he is our Latin yes, man yes yeah. we can go to him and he's telling us the pronunciation which just shows again what a community effort it is yeah yes. and what it means because otherwise we're just learning gibberish we think what are we singing <laughs> what is this <laughs> yes Yes, is, is there, there is. There is Cornish in the uh, in the script that a lot of the professional actors say. Um, one of the songs has some Cornish in it as well, so yeah. it really reflects the and place. And the music it's come director from. Um, Ben is from Cornwall, and um, he actually did a an album um, in memory of the um, Prayer Book Rebellion last year, and the um, lyrics that. Um, his friend uh, friend wrote with him were in Cornish and it was just yeah it's wow. incredible so you know he certainly knows what he's doing yeah. um, Fiona O'Cleary wrote the words for him I think so yeah it's amazing to work with such talented passionate people and we have to speak with a Cornish accent when we say our lines as well <laughs> that we do Liz <laughs> Because what I've understood is that the the, the, Corn, the Cornish people d didn't speak English, so they, they knew more Latin than they knew English. Mm -hmm. so that yes. was one of their problems with this new arrangement. And yeah. one of the, um, they were looked um, down upon as well for um, being um, different like that, but they really honoured and, and treasured their heritage, and um, they were being encouraged sort of away from that, which was even more, you know, um, disturbing to their way of faith and tradition. And I think that that Cornish heritage is something that's really important um, in telling this story, because over time, it's it's almost become twisted to look like this is a bunch of um, kind of people from the countryside trying to take on the king, and, and what a silly idea. And actually, if you unpick the history of it, they were really well organised. They were incredibly strategic with what they did. They were very successful, and if it had been different by a day or two this could easily have changed the course of English history um, so it's it's quite interesting yeah, it's looking at all of that and giving a real representation of what happened on stage yeah that's their passion the whole of the passion of the people the local people uh, at every level comes through in the, in the play mm -hmm. and, and you get a good understanding and the play is in almost in the round the the, the, the audience are on the stage as well Yes, because that's what Martin wanted. He really wanted it to be a community feel because this is all about a village and a community coming together and rising up to try and protect what they they um, 
believe in and yeah. their faith and their ways. So we do have seats available on stage for those who are brave enough. Yeah. <laughs> so when they, when they can sit during during the first half, it feels like they're in those parish meetings with us. Right. Um, Join so in. I would advise getting those tickets. I think it'd be wonderful. Yes, but talk you know, about a close-up view. <laughs> people need to know what the. What the getting into they do they do they're, i don't think there's any really kind of audience no. participation nobody's gonna have to get no one's gonna be forced there's not there's no. not like a <laughs> it's just a different it's just a different perspective exactly it's just being able to see the actors in such close proximity it feels like you're flying on the wall and mm-hmm. it's just like oh wow i'm really getting you know good close up and we want to kind of welcome people into the guild house yeah into yes. this community yes. so by having them sit on the stage with us they are fully part of that yeah they are there in the meetings when we have people visit they are there whilst we're having the feasts and they can see the dancing and they can see the the musicians with instruments they are fully embedded in it absolutely the breathlessness after the dancing it will all be <laughs> yeah. very yeah. very we all on the floor <laughs> they feel if they try and remember the latin <laughs> all the exactly really close up and personal <laughs> Yeah, so the da- the dancing, is the dancing just at the end or is, is it throughout the... The dancing play? is, I think it's more at the beginning when we're the, in- the guild house is introduced and they are, you're seeing what goes on at the guild house, which is um, amazing celebrations and these community gatherings and um, that's when we get... Yeah. The big oh, traditional yeah. and religious <laughs> celebrations throughout exactly. the year, uh, which is, which of course now oh, don't really happen at all. And that's so it was a very, very active way of living at that time compared to now where we don't really celebrate in a, in a big way except for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of the dancing has actually been researched by more of our wonderful cast <laughs> who spent time in libraries and museums looking at historical sources from that time, looking at paintings and seeing the kind of movements that were happening. And then people brought that back to the rehearsal and then we put it together as a group, which just, again, demonstrates the wonderful community that's been put together by the show the fact that people are so willing to give up that time and that effort uh, it just blows me away every week (laughs) and it's just a beautiful joyful feeling of that community and that village celebrating Mm -hmm. together because obviously they're hard workers there um in that rural country but um taking this opportunity to gather and to celebrate was a you know a real pinnacle of of life life, yeah Mm -hmm. just in a natural way so would you say a bit more about how, how the North Cop regards the community? What, what, how you're trying to make connections? Well, that's my job, really. <laughs> um, the community is hugely important to the North Cop. Um, so we've taken on in the last few years um, looking after the Barnfield Theatre, which is historically a community venue and something that's really important to us that the community feel a home there we have local groups who hire that and that can be theatre groups that can be schools that can be organizations we want this to feel like a a community space that they have an ownership to that they feel at home with Um, and then creating community theatre it's not something that's new to the Northcott the Northcott have a really long history of putting on these productions that the community are involved in and the community are invested in Um, and so with the return to producing this year I think commotion time is the perfect play to be doing you know not only are we bringing in 50 members of the community through the door but we're also telling a story that is rooted in our history a story that has shaped the city around us has shaped the region around us so it's it's hugely important to us it's the reason why I'm at the North Cop to be doing projects like this because it it makes such a difference to people and it's such a joy when you sit in that rehearsal room on a Thursday night in the Barnfield and you hear people who have been going to the Barnfield and the Northcott for years since they were a child or they were on the pantomime stage there, or you hear people who have just moved to the city for university and they've not been in those buildings before. And each of those people we are taking and we are saying to them, you have a home in this theatre, you have a right to be here, to be on the stage, to be in the audience and to be seeing stories that matter to you that's in my eyes the most important thing that we can do yeah it's wonderful it's a a beautiful gathering place from of people of all walks of life it's just you're all on um you're all on level ground there and Mm -hmm. your your aim is the same 
and it's an amazing experience to be in such a community. I think the Northcott's a pinnacle of the creative arts in Exeter. You know, it's a it's a, a wonderful opportunity that you know they've had other art exhibitions and things there. It's not just the theatre; it's being used for other things, and it's it's just a, a wonderful centre of excellence, really. And for it to be in the centre of the university is helpful mm -hmm. too, because all the young people, you know, are feeling and seeing this 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 in, in their environment as well. Mm -hmm. And I love how you say it, being a part of. Um, people's lives were so you know it's a tradition in that because I used to go with my family when we were little to go and see the pantomime each year that was the tradition and then you know we've been to see other plays there and now being on the stage it's just amazing yeah. just being part of our lives yeah I feel exactly the same I was in a show when I came to Exeter and I went to the university I was in a community show my first summer there and now to have gone full circle and be working there I still get a thrill walking through the stage door. I can't believe that it's it's a job that I have and I get to work with people who are giving up so much time out of their lives. You know, we've asked a lot of these people. We've said, give us every Thursday night you've got over the summer to put this on. And you took a risk on, on us and on the theatre and hopefully it's all going to pay off. Absolutely. And there is certainly a magic when you walk into the North Court or into the stage. It certainly holds that sort of energy of these storytellings and people gathering to um, tell a story or to um, be told a story. Because mm -hmm. there's certainly magic that lies within that. Well, it sounds, you know, very exciting. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> we love it. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone involved seems to have a passion for this in, in mm -hmm. one way or another everybody's very involved and, and they're a lovely group everybody's really really generous when somebody gets something slightly wrong it, you know people just help you and help it just fall into place yeah, and, very and they help you for the, to, to get it right next vibes. time it's, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's very and, and learning masses I think everyone's saying and every time I turn to somebody I say Gosh, aren't we lucky? We're so lucky to be here. It's, this is such a, an opportunity. It's so wonderful. The enjoyment, the pleasure that the actors are having is, mm -hmm. is, is it comes over on. I think in in the, yeah, the absolutely. Acting. The realization of yes. of um, how lucky we are to be a part yeah. of something yeah. so amazing, a piece of history itself. Yeah, we've done lots of hard work. Lots of people have oh, yes. given up time <laughs> and effort and summer holidays, and now we just need an audience. That's so right. That's we, right. Need, we are asking the community to get behind it and come and see this show and share in the story of it because it's a really beautiful thing. There are nine performances, so there's an opportunity for, to, so to come on any time during yeah, this. Yeah, there's no excuse for not being here. <laughs> the 18th, 18th to the 23rd. Okay. Well, do, do you mind me just sort of going a little bit, a little bit off topic, but not not completely? Um, what is, what is your uh, approach to making the music, for example, available ahead of the event? So if, if there were clips that could be played on radio mm -hmm. or became hits, some of these Gosh. tunes, maybe... It's like top of the pot. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> I think I know, perhaps at Christmas, one of the beautiful chants, the plain chant, perhaps that could be yeah, a Christmas funny, song. It? It's, so, it, it's so ethereal and beautiful. That could be a Are Christmas... Are you vying for Christmas number one? Luke? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is taking on Ali Jones. <laughs> I think um, so. we are in the process of, of hoping the show has a life after this, and I think the music would be a really key part of that. Um, we are putting together trailers to advertise the show, and I think some of the music will be featured in that. But but any more than that, you'd have to ask Ben, our wonderful musical director, because he holds the power there. <laughs> well, well, look, I, you know, not not trying to get into a, any <laughs> argument about that at, at, at this time, but just in general, mm -hmm. because there's there's um, the Elevate Festival is is during next week. Yes. And as part of that, I know Documental Theatre mm -hmm. at the Barnfield are going to be having a workshop about musicals. Yes, they are. It's going to be fantastic. So they're, they're trying to promote the idea of this region mm -hmm. as, as having an interest in musical theatre. Yeah. So Phon Phonic FM is basically a, a music channel. Mm -hmm. So our, our normal bread and butter operation, like, like behind you... Um, you'll see a poster, Doc, Doctor Feelgood. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So, there's a, so that's a benefit for Phonic FM. Oh wonderful. And so we'll we'll play 
you know, we're not, we're, we're, we're not, there's not, there isn't a memo going around you have to play three Dr. Feelgood <laughs> every, every two hours or something. But we will be playing some Dr. Feelgood because they've very kindly agreed to do a benefit for us. Well, when I was talking to Ben about, because I was like, well, ask the music director, he's the he's the the pro in the music area when you're asking for suggestions he did send me the recorded tracks a link oh. and um but i wasn't sure if you were allowed to open a present before oh. christmas kind of thing yeah oh, we have to check and on. i was like oh, I ben, you know, hold, the night. hold tightly you know, onto those like... <laughs> the, 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 holds the jewels <laughs> the, 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 to be specific there's 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 two more people coming I'm, I'm hoping. Yes, next I'm, week. I'm, I've, I've had the experience of you just suddenly arriving, so my confidence <laughs> that there will be two more people next, next week is very high at the moment. But maybe you could ask somebody about uh, the idea of having tracks as part of a radio show. I will add that to my to-do list. Yeah, uh, Grace is the person to go See if we can find that out for you. <laughs> Um, but if not, we promise it's really good anyway. I'm sure. I'm sure it's really <laughs> You're going to have to come. You're going to have to see it. It's just a general thing. I, 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 so, no, so, so that's the sp- specifics. Mm-hmm. If I've got some tracks next week, I'll definitely play them. But in general, Documental Theatre have got four or five songs from Mary and the Matrons, mm-hmm. which was at the Barnes yes. in development. And since then, mm-hmm. on YouTube, they've got um, r- video recording of, of, from the studio yeah. and very good productions on, the, on their songs. Mm. So those songs can become known. Yeah. And if they, if they do another production of Mary and the Merchants, people will know what, it, what it's about. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the kind of thing we would love to do with this show. I think we're holding on to it tightly for the moment before the, the world premiere yeah. and opening night next week. Um, but... It's such a beautiful story. It deserves to have a life after this. And if there is a way we can properly record those with, like you say, the best production values we can get, we would love that. And I think the music that Ben has put together deserves that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he is a genius. It's amazing just um, practicing with him at the piano. And then he's just, like, rearranging it and just, like, <laughs> he's like oh, my As gosh, he's amazing. <laughs> and he does all these different parts and bringing us in at all of different times. And, you know, we're not... You know, most of us aren't professional singers. There's a few people there who do teaching for singing and that. But it's amazing how how good he makes us look. <laughs> and he brings in the ensemble, the, 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 the acting chorus. He brings us in to sing as well. And he does it so well that we all stop at exactly the right moment because his, his experience bringing that out uh, you know the, the best out in us is quite extraordinary we all d- have to sing in our in our audition in fact to make sure we've got some <laughs> form of voice <laughs> <laughs> making yes, this audition that... sounds so <laughs> <laughs> well no, but it's, uh, the pe- people i think have had, had a good experience of the audition and the connection yes yeah and i think yeah. also oh, absolutely an audition I've not, I've not... it's kind of it's for both of you. It was one of the least scary auditions. It was very nice and it, it was, was amazing. And the first, I remember the first question Martin asked us when we were all there in a little circle and you think, okay, oh, yeah, you're really here for the audition, you know, don't recognize anyone here. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting a bit nervous, you know. And he sits down and he says, okay, so what's your preference? Do you like ketchup in the fridge or in the cupboard? Oh, I'm like, yeah. I was like, I was like yeah. okay, this is a bit different than I expected. But it really an audition but it opens, people, do you want to go on this journey exactly. with us? It's a, it's a it question and an people. invitation. Is anyone really pedantic up. and going to be very difficult as well? It was so yes, it was very <laughs> to find that out before. Very clever in opening people up and getting and just seeing what they're like as people and uh, and how responsive yes. and how much they sort of give mm-hmm. and then um, Ben did these amazing little music things where we just like walked around all humming. He just said, "Just hum anything," and then as you go around, just pick a note and I'll bring you together when we get this amazing chord. And so he sort of brought us together and and we're sort of singing this amazing chord that and he, he sparkles when he does it because he's so passionate about it too which is really lovely and he's saying it's an amazing you know that moment that music that sound you know of all the chords in you know it like, can mm. be chosen we're, we're singing this one and it's it was a really amazing and interactive experience it wasn't just walking in the door reciting a few lines and then walking out it was amazing so if we do a community show next year the auditions won't be terrifying no, everyone will come again yay, it's really it good will be lovely <laughs> Yes, well, I know, um, I'm, I'm not sure he's coming, but the, the, the Wild Show will be after this one, and there's a, there's a friend of ours who came to one of the early 
I think he described it as a workshop, but mm -hmm. he didn't realise it was an audition. And I don't think he was accept well, either he backed out of it or wasn't making mm -hmm. it. But he he just enjoyed it a lot. And at that point Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought after the audition. I was like, you know what, even if I don't get in, that was an amazing experience. Yes, exactly <laughs> that. Yes, it was. It was it was very special. The the other thing he said was that he he, he didn't think the whole script had been written at that point. The, it, it, it was, was just the, the, part of it. Oh, I think she so wanted to work on it once we were right, in place. I, I think it was... It was I think the the first draft had been done, but obviously mm -hmm. this, um, you know, so that's what, you know, sparked Martin. He was like, oh my goodness, we've got to do this and we've got to do it now. Sarah Dickinson, whoop, whoop. Um, <laughs> but um, then as we've gone through, she's been finalising it and um, and then we've she's been there seeing it in action and then thinking, you know what, what would work here is let's add a little bit more here or take a little bit there. Mm -hmm. So it's been a real interactive and hands-on process, which has been, you know, part of the experience because you're not going to be part of this sort of, um, you know, experience very often, something, you know, so um, fresh off the bat and, you know, being created in that moment. Yeah, it's really alive. Yes, and it? being able to be there with the writer, and she's an absolute gem. I love her. She's and so Sarah Dickinson is a dramaturg. If you research Sarah Dickinson, she's actually something called a dramaturg, and there are very what, few. Uh, that's, uh, it's quite complex, but it's someone who t takes other people's plays if they need to go on the stage and be reduced in size. She will actually change the play according to the oh. number of hours it runs for, mm -hmm. and she, she works with other writers, and she writes her own work as well. So for her to work in this way would be totally normal for her to yeah. come in and be changing as it goes along because that's what she actually does as a job with a, in, in, at the Globe and at, at, at other top theatres. So she's uh, that, that's ha she that, that is I, the, the word dramaturg sounds strange, but it's actually quite incredible when you read about her role. It's she's in, she has a, a a very unusually comprehensive way of working with actors and playwrights and theatres and directors and producers. She's also just a wonderful woman. She <laughs> is, right? She, she is such yes. an advocate yes. for telling women's stories. Yes. And really passionately believes that this is the right thing to be doing and how interesting it is to have a story about kind of war and battles and politics, but told from the perspective of the women involved, told from that angle. Um, she's a really generous person to have in that room yeah she really brings a lot of heart even just for the rehearsals she, there's so much heart there, you know, having, lovely, that's yeah. lovely. having that passion right there you know but, the writer is made. but it's also told as as gossip because this is another thing but, 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 <laughs> but, 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 well hearsay that's um because the, the, a bit, i've got a better idea now i think mm -hmm. of how the how the staging and location is so that what what is going on in exeter with the siege it is just received as announcements or news? Or yes, it's it's communicated through letters. They have letters from people who are there saying what is happening. Um, and that's how the how one of the parts of the stories develops. Um, some of the people are going away to have meetings in, in different areas in the southwest, but it's, it's found its home in Poundstock, in that building. And then you hear about how the, the plot is developing. And news travelled fast in the same way it does, you know, if you were in the middle of a, uh, you know, the, the countryside, wherever mm -hmm. people are, before we had all these technical ways of communicating, news travelled very fast. Somebody would tweet with word of mouth. Yes, yes, but, it would be. Yes. And letter, and letter, a man on a horse with a letter was one of the earliest ways for people to communicate, I believe. And it's not a WhatsApp message, but the message still gets there. Yeah. Just the same. <laughs> yes, but over, over time. Yes. Because this is, this is, this is, this is in, interesting. There's a, there's a book called the, the, the Gutenberg Parenthesis, which is saying that print is just a sort of temporary thing mm -hmm. and we're, we're now with the internet going back to a medieval mm. sort of news system mm. which is much more based on voice mm -hmm. and memory and open to reinterpretation yeah and interestingly i think you know one of the key things that happens in this story is the um production of the the book of common prayer which is translated from latin into english and that's what they want to happen in all church services it's all being done in english but actually in one of the key moments the women of poundstock ignore that and continue to speak in latin continue to 
um, do what they believe is right. So even though you've got things printed, you've got your instructions from government and from everybody, they hold true to those memories and those beliefs and they can't be stopped. And yeah. traditions of, 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 of centuries, so their parents and, and their they grandparents. hold it, you know, all this they hold sacred to be ripped from them with mm -hmm. desecration. Mm -hmm. so. It's a highly emotional play, but also we have all the ways that people lived with their celebrations, so a, a joyous play as well. It's got it's a, a every coaster. aspect of life, every it's aspect of life. all roller coaster you feel of the life. Feels. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely well, feel all the feels. Yeah, I, I can see, I can see how, how I'm understandably. A lot better now. Have we yeah. sold it to you? Will you come and oh, see oh, it? Yeah, you I better. Think I, think I, will, I think I will come and see it. Excellent. Like, I will yeah. come and see it. Would be good. You don't, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, I, you don't well, want to miss I out on this one. I've just got to check somewhere, but I think. I th oh yes, I think I can say that I will. Will come and see yeah. it. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. And the, the other thing to ask is, if you if you did put it on tour in mm -hmm. in the southwest, would you need to change it at all to to make it work in another? another place or is there something specific about Exeter that you've done with this production of it? I think this production is really special based on the fact of it being the the premiere, based on the group that we have had produce it, that time we've spent together in the rehearsal room. But I think there's something universal about the themes in the show that would translate yes. if you if you took it on tour. Obviously, well firstly you'd need funding for that, but you would have to see about the different venues it would go to and the staging and all of the kind of logistics of it. But I still think, and you guys can tell me if you think I'm wrong on this, but I still think the the stories of love and hope and fighting for your community. And still continuing on after tragedy. It's it's a core and um, universal um, core. Part of living. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Especially in rural communities as well. I, I'm a big fan of taking arts to rural communities and I think there's a real um, message in this play about rural villages and parishes fighting for their identity and what's important to them, ignoring the, the instructions from on high, ignoring London, doing what they know to be true to their community. So I, I think it, there'd be a good call for it. It could be anywhere, Bristol or Wadebridge or somewhere further down mm. Truro in, in that area where they would love it. And But particularly Bristol, because everybody from the west of England go, you know, centres in Bristol. Or, sure. Or we take it to the West End and the North Cots. <laughs> <laughs> and all of these actors. Yeah, that would be, be a very different thing though, wouldn't it? Yes, it would, be, it would be a different thing. But it would still have... It would certainly bring into light, though, this incredible, you know, heart of, yeah. of the show. And there would be plenty incredible. of takers from the cast, I'm sure, <laughs> <laughs> to be part of it. Well, I mean, you just have to introduce a bit more dilemma into it. You'd have to have the printers with their new prayer book as <laughs> part of the debate. Do you know what? Having spent all this time sitting in a rehearsal room with Sarah, I have no doubt that wherever you wanted to do this show, in whatever format, mm. she would be capable of yeah. making it. Work. Because of being this dramaturg, yeah. she could change anything. She could do it. She changes it on the spot, yeah, quite oh, easily. Okay, well, that would be, be a bit more debate. <laughs> well, I, I think I think we've got about five five minutes left now, so would you just start again and say what this play? Because we get new listeners all the time. So what you said about ten past nine? Can you remember what, back what then, is guys? this? What is this? <laughs> what is this play? And when is it on? Well, this play is really about a, a community in North Devon who are very strongly connected to the other villages and the other towns around. And it's about a time just after Henry VIII died in 1549. And the people of this village have, are trying to build a guild house. And there is the guild house there. You can go and visit it yourself. It's wonderful. It's the only guild house left, which is a community center in Poundstock in North Cornwall. Mm -hmm. And it's on at the North Cot from Friday the 18th to Wednesday the 23rd of October. Uh, Friday the 18th is already sold out, which we are thrilled about. Um, but we've got relaxed performances, signed performances, audio described performances. We have a post-show discussion with the wonderful historian Mark Stoyle <laughs> on Tuesday the 22nd. And it's a story that is rooted in the southwest it's about what matters to communities it's about the women who keep those groups of people together and the sacrifices that that people made for the things that they believed in 
which women do still today, of course, in many ways do this. And it's, it's just wonderful to see the, the community coming together to express how a community worked mm -hmm. all those years ago and how they changed, tried so hard to change things and their passion for each other and, and for, the, for, for, for this old tradition, their old religion, and to keep it in existence. And not just their religion, I think, but also their, their ownership of life the life that they had worked through a period of t turmoil anyway to build their life, to hold their community, to have their guild house fighting for that ownership and that authority over it despite what other powers were saying. It's a historical, you know, historical event again being as a historical moment bringing this historical event to light again and bringing it into Exeter and giving them the the honour and the adoration that they um, so deserve. So come and see it. Yeah. It's going to be wonderful. Come see okay. it. <laughs> well, I think I think we we'll, I think we we'll, no. Well, would you t uh, introduce each other uh, again as well? Because I, I we, we did because you arrived so suddenly. <laughs> Give you a hard so time. Sorry, sorry, well, we were so excited. <laughs> we discussed it this idea, didn't we? <laughs> I, I, and people have been listening to it. I, if you just say who 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 you are, and uh, where, how you got in, well, you, you could say again how you got into this situation if you like. Well, I have always adored acting. I didn't realise I adored acting. I adored playing when I was little and <laughs> doing imaginary games. I didn't realise I was directing and acting <laughs> until later on. I thought you can do this as a job. What? <laughs> and um, I got into community theatre more recently, and through that found the audition for the commotion time. Wasn't sure what it was all about, but thought I'd go and try it out anyway. And I'm so glad I did to be part of such an incredible and monumentous event and occasion. It's incredible. Do you and know? I am Katie Grace and I am in the um, choir. I'm Elizabeth Thomas and I think from childhood I loved acting and I, I was only in one play probably that I can remember but as an adult my daughter wanted to be in a, in a pageant of monarchy in Guildford in Surrey and I went along for her to be part of it. It was a very big event. You had to rehearse for three weeks and it was 20 minutes away. And they said, right, well, you're going to be Queen Guinevere straight away. So, <laughs> so I was picked out to take this role. It was an unspoken role because these pageants are on a field. So I did that. And then I had a job for <clears throat> um, just under 10 years working for a region, uh, regional for a charity. So I had to do public speaking all the time. And so every week I'd be speaking to a group of people. And I enjoyed it so much. I thought, gosh, this is really good. I, you know, that, that challenge was, um, you know, lit me up. And, and then um, I, I worked as, in improv just literally learning how to improvise in in uh, in front of other people in workshops and in the British Improv Project up in um, uh, Stafford which is held three times a year now so uh, yeah I, I, I have a um, I saw this and I, I thought it's exactly what I would love to do I was so pleased to be part of it and I, that's why we all give our time I think it's uh, for that reason and you are? And I am Grace Plant, the community engagement producer for the Northcott Theatre. Um, it's a role I've been in for about, ooh, six months now. Um, and this has been my first big project with the Northcott, working with this amazing community cast on this truly wonderful play. Um, so I'm having a great time. She's <laughs> amazing. She does She's so a... much. <laughs> and that's the thing that we're all seeing, all the cast say, this team of people that we're... I seeing work in front of us, uh, you know, the the costume designer and the then Martin Berry, the creative director and the and um, the writer and Grace, all of them, they work together so incredibly fluidly. It's just been wonderful to be part to watch I know, how it's, it's evolving. Incredible. It's really we we are we are watching this evolve in front of us. It's quite and right. the musical director. This huge overwhelming task that they just sort of yes. make happen. So many people. So all, all you need now is an audience. To exactly. Yes. Yes. As well. yes. And they're going Absolutely. to love it. They really will absolutely love it. And yeah. 18th the 23rd of October. October. Tickets are available online now. Okay. Yes. All right, that's enough. <laughs> thank you think, so much. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you really for coming. Oh, thank, thank you, you for, for having us, us here. Yeah, it's it's been, good been, been a really, really great event. Um, and good old Phonic, phonic FM. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Phonic for, for FM. Well, it's, it's, it's okay. It's, yes. a, it's a, the, the, the studio is not the most advanced. Well, it's an advanced studio, but it's not necessarily completely together. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's holding up all right. So we're moment. grateful for you to put this out. 
Yeah, it's yeah. been wonderful to share this experience. No, well, that's good. I'll just play some, get some music going. This is, this is um, 